Hi, this is Jack West, medical oncologist from Swedish Cancer Institute in Seattle, and I'm joining you from Yokohama, Japan, where I'm here for the World Conference on Lung Cancer. It's the largest uh, meeting about lung cancer of the year anywhere, and it's now an annual meeting. There are always very interesting presentations at this, but one of the uh, most attention-getting ones is actually about small cell lung cancer, which is frankly unusual. It's been a, a difficult one for us to study and show progress on, so that's certainly interesting. And this has real clinical implications for uh, the use of immunotherapy in this. So let me give you a little background. This is. Uh, a subset analysis of a trial called Checkmate 032 that took patients with previously treated and now progressing small cell lung cancer who uh, would then receive either single agent nivolumab Opdivo or the combination of nivolumab with uh, ipilimumab, also known as Yervoy. And uh, this trial has been presented in earlier iterations and has demonstrated that the single agent and the combination are both active, but with higher response rates with the combination. Uh, it's not the majority of patients responding, but a significant minority, about 10% or so, to nivolumab and about 20 to 25 uh, percent may respond to the combination, uh, though with more toxicity issues. So we would really love to be able to predict which patients are more or less likely to benefit from immunotherapy. Now, at the same time, uh, it's been challenging to study PDL1 uh, inhibitors or PD1 inhibitors in this setting because we we might suspect that uh, these patients are not going to benefit much because the patients with small cell lung cancer rarely have. Uh, PDL1 expression, which is associated with a greater chance of responding well to immunotherapy. Uh, in fact, only 10 to 20 percent of patients sm with small cell lung cancer have tumors that express any degree of uh, PDL1 expression. So we might have expected to see uh, less activity than we have. So this study, uh, or this analysis of the Checkmate 032 trial, looks at tumor mutational burden, the overall uh, total amount of mutations seen in the cancer cells. And small cell lung cancer is actually one that has a pretty high tumor mutational burden among all of the different kinds of cancers that we see uh, in the body. At, uh, at the same time, even though tumor mutational burden is not a marker that we have routinely uh, studied a lot in lung cancer, uh, there was a very interesting presentation by Dr. Solange Peters earlier this year at, at another meeting, and then a publication in the New England Journal by uh, Dr. Carbone and colleagues that looked at tumor mutational burden in the Checkmate 026 trial, which was uh, single agent nivolumab versus chemotherapy in the first line non small cell setting. Now, in that trial overall, uh, there was no benefit for nivolumab over chemotherapy, which was disappointing and a little surprising uh, that there really wasn't any subgroup in terms of PDL1 uh, expression who benefited more from immunotherapy than chemo. But when uh, the investigators looked at tumor mutational burden and divided these patients into tertiles or thirds, the highest third uh, for tumor mutational burden did significantly better than the patients with low or medium tumor mutational burden. So that's interesting, but it was uh, a single study and a retrospective analysis, uh, and it, it really hasn't led to any big change in practice yet. This study, uh, the analysis of the Checkmate 032 trial, looked at the just over 50% of patients who had tumor tissue available for tumor mutational burden, and the investigators uh, demonstrated that the patients who had tumor mutational burden results performed the same as the overall trial population. And when you looked at the, the different thirds, the tertiles, 
in the Checkmate 032 trial, they saw that whether they were looking at nivolumab alone or the combination of nivolumab with uh, ipilimumab, the patient group with high tumor mutational burden did better than the other groups with the highest uh, response rate. It was as high as 21% to single agent nivolumab and 46% with the combination of uh, nivolumab with ipilimumab. Uh, and those numbers were better than seen in the other two groups. When they looked at other efficacy measures as well, the same pattern was seen. So looking at progression-free survival, the uh, nivolumab alone arm uh, had a one-year progression-free survival of 21% versus just uh, single-digit numbers for uh, one-year progression-free survival in the other two groups. Numbers are higher with the combination and the one-year progression-free survival with the combination is 30%, and this is compared to just 6 or 8% as the one-year progression-free survival uh, with the uh, nivolumab and ipilimumab combination. And then finally, looking at overall survival, same trend and uh, really quite pronounced. So one year overall survival with nivolumab alone, 35% versus 22 to 26% in the other two groups with low or intermediate tumor mutational burden. And with the combination, really the most dramatic difference, seeing a one year overall survival of 62.4% with uh, the high tumor mutational burden patients who received the combination versus just 19, 20, percent uh, for the other uh, two groups. So really a striking difference and it's across all of these efficacy parameters. So I think that uh, putting it all together, what does this mean? We will not see tumor mutational burden uh, become clinically uh, used instantly. For one thing, there is no standard assay for tumor mutational burden at this time. It is a limiting issue that uh, there is no clear definition of how to test it or, or what the cutoff point should be. But on top of the interesting data presented about the Checkmate 026 trial, this really raises the credibility of tumor mutational burden as a predictive marker of who is going to benefit more and who is going to benefit uh, less. So I would say certainly in this setting of small cell lung cancer, it is one that we will be focusing on quite a bit more. But I think it's also going to raise our uh, level of, uh, of confidence in tumor mutational burden in other tumor types, at least in lung cancer. And then, of course, the implications for small cell, that uh, this is an option, either nivolumab or the combination of nivolumab with ipilimumab, are uh, on the uh, NCCN guidelines as options for patients with relapsing small cell lung cancer. The numbers we're seeing are overall impressive, even uh, regardless of tumor mutational burden. But if you actually had uh, the, a tumor mutational burden number that was high, uh, that would give me a, a great deal of confidence that uh, immunotherapy and ideally the combination is the way to go. So. Uh, I think this is really an important result, even though it is retrospective uh, subset analysis uh, and it's not ready for clinical use right now. I think it poises tumor mutational burden as a, a much more relevant test, and I think that it uh, makes immunotherapy an even more compelling argument for patients with small cell lung cancer. So stay tuned on that front.